Hello everybody, welcome back. Today is going to be a little bit different. Today I am going to spill the tea. So by now a lot of you have probably already heard about uh, all the hubbub about that picture of the Bidens and uh, the Carters. No, not those Carters. Jimmy Carter and his wife Rosalind. It's a picture of them in their home. Uh, the Bidens are warmly engaging with them on either side of them in this picture. So the controversy about this picture is uh, the Bidens look giant and the Carters look like little tiny people. And uh, why is that? Are they small? I know as we age we do shrink over time, but I think it's kind of to a limit. I don't think that's what's happening here. Um, so, so if we look at the picture, the interesting thing is that you'll see that the Bidens are the far edges of the frame. And because this picture was taken indoors and because, it, and because of the lack of space in this particular place, the photographer had to use a wide angle lens in order to get everybody in the frame. But as a result, wide angle lenses, especially ultra wide angle lenses, tend to have a pretty bad distortion because what they're doing is effectively bending the light at the edges of the frame to hit the sensor or the film. And as a result, things on the edges of the frames tend to get distorted a great deal. Now, wide angle lenses are great to use for landscapes, especially if you're trying to exaggerate the distance between things, between what's uh, in the foreground and what's in the background, to create a sense of epic scale, to draw the viewer's eye into the image, like they're you know diving into it. But generally, they're not used for portraits because of this distortion. Now, you still can take portraits with a wide angle lens, but you have to be really cognizant of where you're putting the people in the photograph. Uh, it's really important that you don't put them toward the, edge of the edges of the frame. Or if you're filling the frame with an individual, if you're taking a close-up picture of one person, you don't want their head or their feet to reach the top or bottom of the frame either because that can create some really, really unflattering distortion. So in this particular instance, what I would have done is you'll see that the Bidens are on the outside and the Carters are on the inside. Now I would keep the same framing, but I would put the Bidens on the inside of the Carters because as you move closer to the center of the frame, there's a lot less distortion. So even though you know there's a lot of uh, a lot of challenges that this photographer was facing, being in the situation where there wasn't a lot of space to take the picture, I'm sure you know if you've ever been in a restaurant and you want to take a picture of you and your friends in a booth, right? It's difficult to get everyone in the same shot unless you use a wider angle lens, either on your phone or on your camera. Now it's kind of the same situation here. So given those. Uh, given those challenges, given those restrictions, you use the same framing and use the distortion to your advantage. Um, by putting the Bidens on the inside, their relative proportions to the Stewarts? Why do I want to say Stewarts? The... By putting the Bidens on the inside. Yeah. yeah. Uh, by putting the Bidens on the inside, you're kind of negating some of that distortion that happens at the end of the frame. You're using the center of the frame, which has the least amount of distortion, and you're still being able to get everyone in the frame considering the limited amount of space that you have. In order to avoid the situation where the Bidens look like The Rock next to Kevin Hart, um, you use this distortion to your advantage. So generally I wouldn't take, I wouldn't take a portrait like this with, a super, with an ultra wide angle lens, but given the circumstances you can make do. Uh, so what I'm going to do is take a look at what wide angle distortion is and we're also going to take a look at, at a couple images from my back catalog uh, portraits where this distortion has come into play. All right let's take a look at an example of an image where using an ultra wide angle lens uh, for a portrait had the result of uh, making my my poor five foot two wife into a giant. Here she is at uh, the Zion Narrows, and I decided for some reason on this occasion to take a close-up picture of her with an ultra-wide angle lens at its widest setting and decide to fill the frame with her. Um, this is perhaps before I learned better over the course of time, but as you can see, because I filled the frame with the subject, as you get toward the top of the frame, uh, my poor wife's head has been stretched, and toward the bottom of the frame, 
her feet have been stretched as well. Kind of similar to what would happen if you were to enter the event horizon of a black hole. So next up, I thankfully decided to uh, take another photo and just take a step back and center her in the frame a little bit more. Now, as you can see, we have a much clearer representation of her proper stature. She doesn't seem like a giant. She seems much closer to her normal height, which is great. Um, as you can see, just centering the subject, taking a step back if you can, but really just doing your best to avoid putting the subject in the top or bottom of the frame or near the edges of the frame. As a result, you get a portrait that does put the person in their context without creating some really, really awful distortion. And just one more comparison of the two. As you can see, the Bidens on the edge were closer to uh, the distortion you see on the left image, and the Carters toward the inside of the frame um, were not as affected by distortion, and they are their proper height and stature. So this is a good example of how your positioning using a wide-angle lens and where you place your subjects in a frame can greatly distort their size. Okay, here's another example of what not to do when shooting with an ultra-wide-angle lens when you have people in your picture. Here's my wife again. Um, as you can see, I took a close-up picture of her with a wide-angle lens, and as her right arm reaches the left-hand side of the frame here, you can see that it is much larger than her left arm. And as we get toward the center of the frame, that distortion has a bit of a gradient. If you can imagine a vanishing point here in the center of the image, and all the leading lines heading toward that vanishing point, if you remember from art school or art class when you were a kid. So as we can see, um, her right arm is not in reality three or four times larger than her left arm. It just appears so because she's at the edge of the frame and she's being distorted by the wide angle lens. Okay, here's another picture of my lovely wife. Um, she has the privilege of being married to, to a photographer who constantly takes photos of her, but uh, that is the privilege and the curse uh, that she signed up for. Anyway, this is an image at uh, Arches National Park. I've used a, the same wide-angle lens at its widest setting uh, to exaggerate the difference between the stuff here in the foreground and lead the viewer's eye into the image, into the z-axis if possible. Now because I've placed uh, the subject here away from the sides of the frame, there is little to no wide-angle distortion, and she still looks like a human being, thank goodness. So here's a final example of using an ultra-wide-angle lens to your advantage when taking a portrait. Um, it's really sometimes great to lean into that distortion and use it when you're in a situation like this where you have uh, the walls of this tunnel, and you can exaggerate the journey that light is taking through this hallway placing the subject at the center and creating sort of a symmetrical composition really does play into the benefits of using a wide-angle lens. And as long as you are aware of that and you kind of lean into those aspects, you can make the creative decision to make the image better because of the wide-angle distortion and not in spite of it. All right, thank you so much for taking a little trip uh, down this path with me to discuss wide-angle lenses being used for portraiture and maybe why that's not the best idea uh, but given the circumstances what you can do to make that work to your advantage and i hope you've gotten something out of this if you did if you liked it please remember to like and subscribe and uh, i'll see you next week cheers that's some ice cold shit. yeah okay can you do a boom <laughs> yeah that's